I'm Dustin Saldariaga, an immigration lawyer with Scott Legal PC in New York City. In this video, we're continuing our series on the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Visa and looking at what kind of a business qualifies for an EB-5 visa. The law says an EB-5 applicant must invest in a new commercial enterprise, or NCE. But what does that mean? And what should you know before planning to apply for an EB-5 green card? Before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe. We'll keep you updated on our firm's most current and trustworthy information about U.S. immigration, including options to visit, work, or live in the United States. So, to get an EB-5 green card, the applicant must invest in a new commercial enterprise, or NCE. That NCE must then create at least 10 jobs for U.S. workers. These requirements are fundamental to the EB-5 program. They're not just policies or regulations, they're statutes passed by Congress and included in the Immigration and Nationality Act. So what is a new commercial enterprise? The regulations define a commercial enterprise as any for-profit activity that's been organized into a lawful business. This could be a corporation, an LLC, a sole proprietorship, a holding company, or a number of other forms. The definition is very broad. And what does it mean for the commercial enterprise to be new? The regulations also give us a helpful definition, saying that new is anything established after November 29th, 1990. Why November 29th, 1990? Because that's the date that Congress created the EB-5 visa category. So putting both of these definitions together, a new commercial enterprise is basically any for-profit business that was established after November 29th, 1990. So if you're considering whether a for-profit business would qualify as an NCE, the first question is when the business was established. If it was established after November 29th, 1990, it's an NCE. But what if the business was formed after 1990, but you weren't the one who started it? Does the EB-5 applicant need to be the one who actually established the business? No. The EB-5 applicant only needs to invest in the new commercial enterprise. They're not required to have actually started the business. So to summarize, if the EB-5 applicant can show either that they established a for-profit business after November 29th, 1990, or that they invested in a for-profit business that was established after November 29th, 1990, they satisfy the NCE requirement. They would then move on to show that they've invested the required amount, either $800,000 or $1,050,000, depending on whether the business is in a targeted employment area, and that their investment led to the creation of at least 10 jobs for U.S. workers. But what if the EB-5 applicant finds a great business, but the business was created before November 29th, 1990? Is there any way that that business could be a new commercial enterprise? The answer is yes. And the regulation that lays out the requirements for a business created before 1990 can be found at 8 CFR 204.6H. Let's take a look at what they say. 8 CFR 204.6H says that a new commercial enterprise can be one of three things. First, it can be an original business created after November 29th, 1990. We've already talked about this option. A second option is that the NCE can be an existing business that was purchased and then restructured or reorganized. To see what this looks like in practice, check out the 1998 decision Matter of Sofici, S-O-F-F-I-C-I, -F -F which we'll link to below. One of the takeaways from that case is that a few cosmetic changes, a new marketing strategy, and a simple change in ownership are not sufficient to show that a business has been restructured or reorganized. The changes need to be substantial, such as changing the business's mode of operation, its business structure, or the product or service it offers. In short, the changes made need to effectively result in a new business rather than a continuation of the existing one. A third and final option is that the NCE can be an existing business that was expanded through the required investment amount so that the net worth or number of employees of the existing business has increased substantially. The government defines a substantial change as a 40% increase in either the net worth of the business or in the number of employees it has. This expansion would not exempt the applicant from either the EB-5 investment requirement or the job creation requirement. The applicant would still need to invest the required minimum amount 
and would need to show that the investment amount led to the creation of at least 10 US jobs. For example, if an investment of $500,000 increases the net worth of the existing business by 40% or leads to a more than 40% increase in the number of workers that the existing company employs by bringing the number of employees from, for example, 3 to 8, the existing company might then qualify as a new commercial enterprise but the applicant would still need to satisfy the EB-5 investment requirement by investing a total of at least $800,000 into the business, and that investment would need to lead to the creation of at least 10 jobs for US workers. So it's important to keep the NCE requirement and the investment and job creation requirements separate. Meeting the substantial increase requirement to qualify the existing business as an NCE doesn't mean that the applicant satisfies the EB-5 investment or job creation requirements. Now, don't be fooled when the regulation says existing business. Remember that the law creating the EB-5 visa category was passed in 1990. An existing business, when used here, is a business that was created before November 29, 1990. Our experience is that many people are confused about this. They think that an existing business is any business that they did not start. As a result, some people think that if they invest in any business that they didn't create, even if the business was created long after 1990, that they need to either restructure, reorganize, or substantially expand the business in order to qualify for an EB-5 visa. That's not the case. Again, if the business was created after November 29, 1990, whether it was created by the applicant or by someone else, it qualifies as an NCE and does not need to be restructured, reorganized, or significantly expanded. Part of the reason for this confusion is an often cited case called Matter of Izumi, which was decided in 1998 by the Administrative Appeals Office. The decision in Matter of Izumi said that the applicant must establish the new commercial enterprise. The decision also said that if an applicant invests in a business created after 1990, that business could be deemed to be an NCE if the applicant restructures, reorganizes, or significantly expands it. In short, the decision in matter of Izumi seems to directly contradict everything I've told you in this video. Here's why. Four years after matter of Izumi was decided, President George W. Bush signed a law that changed a number of EB-5 requirements. Among other things, the 2002 law got rid of the requirement that the EB-5 applicant actually needed to establish the commercial enterprise. A policy memo issued by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2003 made the impact of these changes clear, saying, as I've said in this video, that the provisions at 8 CFR 204.6H about restructuring, reorganizing, or substantially expanding the business only apply to an existing business, which is a business that was created before November 29, 1990. Now I want to emphasize that if you're looking to purchase a business that was created after 1990, there are some things to be aware of. Even though that business would qualify as an NCE, you would still need to be careful to show that you invested the required amount into the NCE, whether $800,000 or $1,050,000 and that the required amount was dedicated to the creation of jobs. For example, if you transferred the funds directly to the former business owner rather than investing them directly into the entity that will actually be creating jobs for US workers, the government will not count the funds toward the required investment amount. Also, it's important to keep the NCE requirement separate from the job creation requirement. An EB-5 applicant must show that their investment led to the creation of at least 10 jobs for US workers. For example, if you purchase a business that had 50 workers before you purchased it, your investment would still need to create an additional 10 jobs. The 50 positions that existed before your investment do not count toward the job creation requirement. We hope this video about the EB-5's new commercial enterprise requirement was helpful. If it was, please click the like and subscribe buttons to stay updated on future videos about visa options and travel to the US. Thank you for watching.